You've probably driven through the tunnels at Manchester Airport many times, but never noticed quite an ingenious piece of radio equipment. 1997 saw planning permission granted for Manchester Airport for the construction of its second runway. February 5th 2001 marked the opening of the first full-length commercial runway to open in the UK for over 20 years. Construction was no mean feat, with massive parts of woodland in the style area eaten into. The building of a huge tunnel over the A538 road which needed heavy earthworks, and even a temporary railway line on the southern edge of the airfield to carry trains with limestone aggregates from Derbyshire. But, as you know, on Ringway Manchester, it's the little details that count. 1999 was the year that, while the building works were in full swing, a company called Delta Sound commissioned Direct Communications Limited to build an antenna of a more unusual kind. This antenna was to serve the emergency services and enable radio waves to pass through the tunnels and maintain vital coverage below ground. This included the police, fire and ambulance services as well as the airport's own emergency services. The system is called a leaky feeder and it's truly remarkable, so let's head to the tunnel and take a closer look. A leaky feeder, also known as a radiating cable, is often used as part of a communication system in places such as mines, tunnels and other confined spaces where traditional wireless communication methods don't work very well. The earth between this tunnel and the surface prevents the UHF radio waves used by emergency services from entering the space below ground. What you're seeing here is a length of coaxial cable that is actually acting as an antenna and it has small slots or holes along its length that allow radio signals to leak in or out, hence the name leaky feeder. This leaky feeder system is installed along the entire length of the newer tunnel in both directions, providing continuous radio coverage. The coaxial cable acts as a transmission line with the leaks or slots in the cable allowing the signals to propagate into the surrounding space and therefore carrying the radio signals from one end of the tunnel to the other. The cable consists of an inner conductor, an insulating layer, a metallic shield or outer conductor and an outer jacket. The inner conductor carries the radio signals and the metallic shield acts as a ground and prevents external interference. The insulating layer separates the inner conductor from the metallic shield. The slots or holes in the outer conductor allow radio signals to leak in or out. When the radio signal is transmitted through the inner conductor of the cable, some of the signal energy leaks out of the cable and propagates into the surrounding space. This leakage allows communications devices outside of the cable to receive the signals. The slots in the coaxial cable are carefully designed to control the amount of signal leakage and to enhance the performance of the leaky feeder system, amplifiers or repeaters may be installed at regular intervals along the cable. These devices, usually placed at 350 to 500 meter intervals, boost the signal strength and compensate for any signal loss that may occur over long distances or due to environmental factors, but these aren't needed here at Manchester. When radio signals from external devices enter the surrounding area, they can also enter the coaxial cable through those slots or holes. The signal is usually picked up by portable transceivers carried by personnel. Transmissions from those transceivers are picked up by the feeder and carried to other parts of the tunnel, allowing two-way radio communication throughout the tunnel system. Due to the signal loss along its length, a leaky feeder is usually used for frequencies under 1 GHz. Above these frequencies, the losses require too many repeaters, making other options such as directional yagis, log periodics or microwave links more effective. When I cover stories like this, there's usually little or nothing to go off, so there's some questions I have which I'm hoping you the viewer can help me with. The second older tunnel doesn't have a leaky feeder in place, or indeed any visible form of antenna system to maintain radio coverage. This tunnel is considerably longer and no deeper or shallower than the new tunnel. I'd suspect that the leaky feeder system leads over to this building, the site of a more modern four stack dipole array commonly used by Airwave, the UK's emergency services radio system. So, my next question is, is the leaky feeder actually still in use? 
It looks a bit scruffy and bent out of shape in areas, but it's weather sealed and probably in good condition underneath the grime. It was installed in the analog days of emergency services radio, so could have been adapted for the more modern airwave system a few megahertz down the band, I'm not really sure. If anyone has any more information, then let me know in the comments below. So, that's the Manchester Airport Leaky Feeder, quite an interesting and unusual antenna system that I'd love to know more about. If I uncover any more information, I'll do a follow-up video.